Hi, I'm Nan Simonson, and I always begin with the description of my book, Aging Powerfully. I wrote three years ago when I turned 70 with the intent of looking at another one, two, or three decades ahead of 70 of healthy life. And how did I get the idea that that was even possible? I'm a health and wellness coach with a lifestyle medical practice, and we have seen evidence of healthy communities in five zones in the world under the guise of the blue zones of people in their centenarians, people in their hundreds who are living well and healthy. How? Well, with certain, I'll call it formulas, i.e. Um, exercise daily, community, um, a, a spiritual uh, uh, foundation that doesn't mean a religious that just means something that they hold on to that they believe purpose uh sleep and and um stress relaxation or, or stress mitigation and um and nutrition and in all of the blue zones they are primarily whole food plant-based not necessarily exclusively but there is an exclusively whole food plant-based uh, blue zone uh, that's only 15 minutes from me and that is in Loma Linda, California and they're not even and that's the Seventh Day Adventist community of Loma Linda, California and yet the blue zones have also sort of ascribed that to all California Seventh Day Adventists because they are as their beliefs I'll say dictate that God they they owe to their creator the responsibility of caring for their body. And lifestyle is one way, those things that I mentioned, but also food. And it's primarily whole food plant-based, but probably less than, well, more than half of them are vegetarian or vegan, but that means 40, 45% of them are still omnivores. And that's why the Adventist health study is so interesting because they have a group all with a common belief in the value of health, some of whom eat a, a mixed diet. Some are pescatarians. That means, that means uh, plant-based except for fish. Um, Lacto-ovo vegetarian, that's plant-based except for egg and dairy, and then vegan. And that's what I have done for the last five years. I don't use the word vegan when I describe it. I use the word whole food plant-based because there are so many processed vegan foods now. It's a big market. So it's just as processed as most of the standard American diet, which in our country alone, um, they have found statistically that 65%, 65, 70 percent of the calories that are eaten in our country are from ultra processed and processed foods. That's frightening. If you know anything about the microbiome, those trillions of bugs in our gut, all over our body, but primarily in our gut that are responsible for our neurotransmitters, which has to do with dopamine, which is a drive and a reward transmitter, serotonin, which is a quieting, uh, uh, joy giving, um, more than that, but it's, it's not quite what dopamine does, transmitter, endo, anyway, on and on, oxytocin, etc. But it's also responsible for short chain fatty acids, which regulate every function in our body. Only one thing feed those microbes. And again, there are a trillion of those hungry little things, more of them than there are cells in our body. One thing feeds them and it's fiber. Where does fiber come from? Nothing but plants. There is no fiber in any animal product. So all of this to say that I am bringing up the subject, eat more, weigh less, because it came to me, it dawned on me when I was speaking with friends recently, and one of them said, well, I've gained weight, I'm going to eat less. That doesn't last long, and it doesn't last well, because our body 
uh, um, will fight it um, all the way down to our limbic system, our limbic brain will fight a lack of calories um, for fear of, of, um, of death. And there's anxiety that goes along with that. Um, and I was just telling the group because I meet with a group every Tuesday, 1.30 Pacific time called the, and it's, it's the name of the session is PowerPoints. It's points of interest that relate to health. And I was just telling them that I hadn't weighed myself for over a month and I hadn't thought about it. And I got on the scale and I was just the same, even after kind of free form eating. But my free form eating has a pattern. And that's what I wanted to talk about, because if you've read Aging Powerfully or whether or not you have, the first third of it is memoir. The rest is an acronym descriptive uh, description of the acronym powerfully 10 words 10 lifestyle modalities and i talk about the things that make us healthier that have been shown to make us healthier but food is the thing that we're talking about today eat more way less and how could that be possible well i knew what i was going to say because i describe that in the book it, in my case, after almost, well, over 50 years fighting food fears because I had an eating disorder, I didn't know how to eat normally. Um, it's been a, it's just been, it's been so easy. And I'm going on six years now of recovery with a whole food plant-based diet because it feeds the microbiome. It nourishes me at a cellular level. I'm now 73 and I feel physically better than I felt in decades. Um, and so I was telling them this too. There is a, a well, I guess it's an app, uh, chat GBT, it's AI. AI is uh, uh, artificial intelligence and it's, it's millions thousands, maybe millions of bits of information that are all put together to come up with solutions, thoughts, um, conclusions. And so I typed in to my chat GBT app, which I have, can I eat more and weigh less? And I loved that what this, I was going to say disinterested. Yes, it's not interested at all in what I wanted to hear. There's no political bent. There's no this side or that side. It's simply stating facts. And this is what it said. And I thought I would just share this because I couldn't say it better. Eating more and weighing less involves choosing foods that are low in calories, but high in volume and nutrients. This approach, often referred to as volume eating, can help you feel full while consumer, uh, consuming fewer calories. Here are some of the strategies. And that feeling full part, I surprise people often when we dine and they see the volume of food I eat. I eat a lot. I'm 5'2", I weigh 115. I've been like that for years. And, and it used to be a fight, a struggle. It's not at all anymore. But I have... a, a foundation of of um of i'll say requirements of what i eat that fall right in line with what is being i don't know if they're recommending it they're just stating facts so i thought that this was something again i'm just going to read you focus on high volume low calorie foods include plenty of vegetables, fruits, and whole grains in your diet. These foods are high in fiber and water, which can help you feel full. I'm going to add something to that. Also, fiber in our diet has, is it, it's, I was going to say it has fewer calories, and that's not the point. Fiber going through us, pulling things through us, pulls cholesterol out with the fiber, but also pulls fat out with the fiber and certain fiber is so undigestible except by the gut bugs but that doesn't mean it increases our caloric load it's so 
indigestible that the the calories are less than what they look like because we personally i mean forget personally physiologically cannot digest them um i'll keep going uh so these foods are are high in fiber and water which can help you feel full that's what i was going to say and so after some meals where I'm just having the best meal. We, for example, had tacos last night and the filling was a lentil and corn filling with a cabbage slaw on that and little organic um, gluten-free corn tortillas. And I ate six of them, you know, they're little tortillas and, um, and always have a, a steamed vegetable and a bunch of broccoli. I was pretty darn full. And meals like that, can leave us feeling full for three and four and five hours. In other words, from one meal to the next without a need to snack. We finish our meals by 6.30, go to bed two to three hours later so that we don't have food in our stomach to be digested. Don't eat again until 8.30 or nine. That's called time-restricted feeding so that we can go eight to 10 to 12 to 14 hours fasted and not feel hungry because of the kind of food that we eat. It has been proven that processed foods lead to overeating because instead of feeding the microbiome that then sends signals of not only satiety, but also, and I don't know that the microbiome signals satiety that usually happens in your stomach and your small intestines, but it, it, sends signals of wellness to the body in general, but processed foods, super processed, highly processed, or even lightly processed foods don't carry that same amount of fiber and nutrients and leave us feeling hungry within hours. And it has been proven that people who subsist mainly on processed foods, what do you get mainly or, um, uh, most often from a fast food restaurant of any kind, even if you get a hamburger, the buns are white. There's not, there's not whole grains in there. If you get a burger, you can bet it's been filled with something, some kind of filler. There's a lot of fat, or if it's not been filled because there are better burger restaurants. Um, but you're still not feeding the microbiome with something like that because there's no fiber, no whole foods. In any case, it's been shown that people that eat processed foods will usually be hungry again within a couple of hours and eat something else because they're driven to that can lead to two to 300 calories more a day than somebody who simply like me has a good healthy meal can go from meal to meal without wanting more and is feeding the body supremely with those whole foods. So the recommendations are focus on high volume, low calorie foods, incorporate lean proteins like grains, quinoa, for example, which isn't a grain, it's a seed, but people call it a grain, is a high protein seed, grain, uh, legumes, tofu, they mention in here lean meats. So if you're still eating lean meats, make them lean meats, uh, which can help with satiety. Choose healthy fats. Incorporate a moderate amount of healthy fats like avocados, nuts, olive oil, as they can also help promote fullness. I think the volume foods like avocados and nuts can help uh, give the feeling of fullness Oils, added oils, have been shown not to because of Barbara Rolls at Penn State University work on volumetrics that shows that the stomach barely registers oils, and we stop eating based on volume in the stomach, not much of anything else. Um, but that's another subject. Hydrate well. Drinking water, especially before meals, can help you feel feel full and eat less. Uh, I'm up to number five. Avoid calorie dense foods. Limit foods high in sugar and fat like sweets, fried foods, processed snacks, 
um, as they are high in calories, but low in volume. I'm going to add my own words to this because this is the other thing I've been thinking about. Um, I'll just say it. We have a food industry that has divorced or that is divorced from public health, which also then influences what it is that we are offered um, by recommending uh, to the public sector what we should be eating and influencing the, um, the governmental bodies that put out these dictates. There was a time they were not going to put in the recommended daily nutritional guides put out by our government. They were not going to recommend milk every day. And they got such an uproar uh, of, of um, lobbying and threats of uh, reversal of funding that they put it in that that what had been voted as being accepted for our um, our uh, food regulation or food recommendations uh, was withdrawn and dairy went right back in there. That's the kind of thing that I'm talking about, that the groups with the money that don't care about our health are influencing the groups that could care about our health, but would have quite a loss of what they are used to getting if they went against industry. It's it's um, a rather disturbing situation, but it means that more than ever, what I'm doing right here, because I believe it with all my heart, is important. And that is looking at reality and then knowing that we're bucking the system and swimming upstream when we decide to do something different because all of the money and all of the ads and all of the visual recommendations that you see everywhere on billboards, on signs, and the way most Americans eat are going to make us feel that we are the ones that are at odds with um, <laughs> the natural um, uh, natural behavior uh, when actually we're just protecting ourselves from foods that aren't good for us because there's no money in fruits and vegetables, grains and, re and legumes, uh, seeds and nuts. Um, and therefore that's not promoted. We, if we decide that's what we're going to eat on a whole food plant-based diet, which has been shown by the Adventist Health Study, by the Nurses Health Study out of Harvard, um, by Ep Epic Oxford Study, is the healthiest way uh, for people to eat. Avoid uh, calorically dense foods and then eat slowly and mindfully. Take time to chew your food and enjoy each bite. Doing that can help with digestion and give your body time to signal fullness. And then number seven, I'm so glad they said this, regular exercise, incorporating physical activity can help balance your caloric intake and expenditure. Remember, it's important to eat a balanced diet and not restrict your cal caloric intake too severely. And then it recommends consulting with your healthcare uh, specialist. So that's all I wanted to say. My uh, uh, fun fundamental beliefs fall into these categories. When I became a health coach with Lifestyle Medical and the College of Lifestyle Medicine recommends under nutrition, a whole food plant-based diet, it was something that I adopted again, going on six years now. And it's made everything I fought for to, well, I'll just say my, my in adult life uh, fighting again, food fears, uh, it, um, disordered eating could have been so much easier if I had just had an idea of how easy it is to eat the healthiest foods on the planet, eat those foods that lo love the foods that love you back and know that it could settle into longer life, better health 
and not the decline that we see all around us at 70, 70, well, I'm 73 now. I look around me and I see so much illness in my, and you can see it in the way people walk and the, especially in the medical field and the amount of medications and procedures people are getting. And it just makes me so sad. I say to myself, it doesn't have to be that way. So you can, if you want to know more about the caloric um, density chart that I was mentioning, and I'll hold this one up. This one happens to be one that Chef AJ made up. This is the foundation of that belief that I was referring to in that the foods that we were advised to eat, whole foods, plant-based, except for that recommendation of lean meat or even olive oil. I don't add oils to my food at all. There's no need to because I get fat from avocados and seeds and nuts. But the point is that everything, legumes, grains, vegetables, tubers, greens, um, they are all under 600 calories a pound. And what Dr. Barbara Rolls concluded through research, they have a lab at Penn State University studying these things, is that the average person eats three to five pounds of food today a, a day. Well, and, and it's most people, regardless of what they're eating, will tend to do that. If what you're eating is under 600 calories a pound, primarily with just a little bits, in my case, from avocado and seeds and nuts, just a little bit, but the fat is there and it's healthy fat. We can maintain weight and we can maintain weight easily. So you can look up caloric density charts. You can get your own chart. You can, if you have chat GBT, ask the same question. I loved the answer because it's what I've hung my hat on now and what I teach as a health coach on a weekly basis. Um, and I hope you got something out of this. Uh, you can let me know on your comments, give my channel, uh, YouTube Nan Simonson, a thumbs up and have a great day because I know I'm going to. All right, bye-bye.